How's it going everybody? Taxus Man here. I hope that you guys are all having a great day. If you guys would, please give this video a thumbs up. If you guys do really enjoy it, subscribe if you guys have not already. Also, do me the biggest favor of all. Hit that bell notification button. Make sure you guys select all for all notifications. That way you guys don't miss out on future videos or streams here on the channel. Yes, I know my cat is in the background staring out my window, so I apologize for the lighting in the background if it's very bad at the moment because <laughs> she's heavy to make sure she could chase that squirrel even if it's only up here in her mind. <laughs> Ruby, say hi. <laughs> all right. So moving on, we're going to be talking about positives and negatives always. Of course, we are going to be also discussing spoilers. So if you haven't seen Transformers Rise of the Beast yet, um, this is your spoiler warning. I'm going to be diving into Positives and negatives, we're going to be discussing things about this movie in spoiler detail, so you've been warned. So this film takes place in the 1990s, clearly, just because of the musical choices, the style, and how people talk. And it is also confirmed to be a sequel to Bumblebee, so they make a Bumblebee reference, the Bumblebee movie reference, in this movie. So it takes place after that, and this is part of the Transformers franchise being rebooted. Again, so if you didn't know, it was supposed to be the Transformers trilogy with the original Transformers movie from 2007, then Revenge of the Fallen, and then Dark of the Moon. Then they tried to reboot it with the Mark Wahlberg movies with um, whatever the one was with the Dinobots and then Last Night. And this is the second attempt to reboot the franchise, starting off with Bumblebee, now we have Rise of the Beast, and this one also does set up a sequel, um... Because apparently now, uh, Hasbro has nothing better to do but try to combine their franchises to sell more toys and make more money. So both Transformers and the G.I. Joe franchises exist in the same universe. Um, that's the biggest spoiler in this review, I think. Um, at the end, G.I. Joe is trying to recruit Noah, the main human character in the film, to be like, come join us. We really could use you. And I'm just like... For a moment, I thought, okay, this bunker in this room kind of reminds me of Sector 7 from the first Transformers. And that's what I thought Bumblebee in this movie was going to do. Is like, okay, it's a prequel kind of series to the Michael Bay movies. No, no, no. They're just doing their own thing now. And it, it doesn't matter. Um, both the Beast Transformers and the Terracons, they didn't feel, like, special, in my opinion. And... As someone who never watched Beast Wars, I, and I just went into this movie saying, I just went into this movie and I just saw, oh look, it's an ape, and it's an Autobot. Oh, it's a cheetah, it's an Autobot. Um, flying bird dragon thingy, it, that's an Autobot. <laughs> Rhinoceros, that's an Autobot. And then you see, the, and then you meet the Terracons, and I'm just like, okay, so they're Decepticons, that instead of worshipping Megatron or Starscream, they worship... Um, something that can eat entire planets. I just that you're still Decepticons. <laughs> you're still the bad guys. I I just didn't feel like the Beast and the Terracons were anything special. Besides the fact that they were just Autobots and Decepticons, just in the movie to sell more toys and have a reason to retcon Unicron's appearance in Transformers and Last Night. Um, the film is great when you get the Transformers on screen. Like, the opening scene is nothing but Transformer action. And I was like, alright, this is awesome. This is good. And in the back of my mind, I realized, wait a minute, there's humans in this movie. They're going to show up eventually. Literally, the opening scene is just the Transformers. Just Transformers. I want a movie where it's literally called Transformers, and it focuses on Transformers only. Why do they need to have that whole... Human element into a Transformers movie. The Transformers shows never had humans. And even shows like Transformers Prime, which I think is really good, they have the human characters in it, but they're not the focal point of the show. The show is called Transformers Prime. So it focuses, guess what? On the Transformers. If you want to have a show or a movie franchise that's about humans and Transformers meeting up, there should be called Transformers Meets Humans. Da 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 da. 
when you get the robots on screen, this movie is awesome. But when you get to the human parts and the humans interacting and explaining to the audience the plan or the plot or what just happened in the past 15 minutes because the audience is dumb as hell and can't remember what happened 15 minutes ago, it, it just makes your film boring and borderline irritating. Like, I don't need you to tell me what a warp drive is. I don't need you to explain to me for 10 minutes your MacGuffin device within the movie to me multiple times. He's got the key. He's got the key. we got to protect the key. Save the key. Keep the key. Destroy the key. Don't destroy the key. Please, don't destroy the key. It's all about this MacGuffin device. Like, if you thought that in the first Transformers movie that Michael Bay did back in 2007 with Shia LaBeouf, was irritating with the whole, protect the Allspark, protect the Allspark, gotta protect the Allspark. They have the exact same thing in here, except it's called something different. And instead of it being the Allspark, it's some sort of transport warp key thingy that, you know, allows you to travel from planet to planet instantaneously. <laughs> it's the same plot of the first. This movie has the exact same DNA outline plot of the first Transformers movie from 2007. Almost two decades later, they can't come up with a different plot. <laughs> it, 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 and this movie's boring, especially the final act. The, fin the finale, all the finale act does is set up the sequel, and then we get some sort of Lord of the Rings Mordor and Avengers Endgame mashup meets Talking Robots. But the CGI background is boring. So much predictability. You never feel like anyone's in danger or in peril the entire time. Yes, I know. Next spoiler. Bumblebee is killed off at the beginning of this movie. And I was just like, okay, that's a risk. Like, I know for a fact, like, Transformers are constantly getting killed. And then, you know, they get resurrected in the show and whatnot. And then did that in Revenge of the Fallen. And I was like, okay, you've killed Trent, you've killed Optimus Prime. <sighs> okay, Megatron got his revenge. We still have another hour and a half of the movie, so there's no way he's dead. I had the exact same feeling in this movie when it came to Bumblebee. I'm you know, like, they're on Earth. You have Energon deposits. You're not gonna stay dead forever, Bumblebee. And I knew he was gonna get resurrected. So unfortunately, I just there's no sense of peril or danger, um, unfortunately. Um, last couple things. This movie is filled with jokes, and I laughed at most of them. Unfortunately, there are a bunch of racist moments within this movie, and it just made my eyes roll. I'm like, really? Really? You, you've gone from piss jokes and cursing and dogs humping on each other to racial messaging now? I just, again, why can't the Transformers movies just have Transformers in them? Like, yeah, it would be an hour shorter, but who cares? <laughs> I just, this movie was fun to watch, I guess. And it'll be something I get to watch on occasion, you know, with people that haven't seen it. But I think this movie is kind of forgettable. And the fact that this movie is, like, just over two hours long, the movie just goes by really fast. Like, it just flies. There's just so much happening on screen, and it goes by really fast. Like, I, I will admit that, you know, things are just rolling and going and going and going. So you do have to keep up and pay attention. But the film just, I feel like the film should have been an hour and a half, not almost two and a half hours. Because um, the film is constantly just, it takes these pause moments with the human characters to be like, hey, now because of this, now we have to do that. I'm like, can't you just show it on screen and let us figure it out for ourselves and quit treating us like idiots? But apparently they can't do that. Overall, guys, I'm going to give Transformers Rise of the Beast a 6 out of 10. It was decent enough as an action movie, but it didn't satisfy me the way I think I was hoping it would. Um, I went in with the low expectations, and i it's not that I was disappointed. I just expected more. So... Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one. Look forward to more videos and streams coming out soon. Bye, guys.